Well, there's lots of news about illegal immigration to bring you. Is the Rwanda bill starting to work? So Irish ministers are now pointing fingers at Rishi Sunak's government over the Prime Minister's removal policy. The spat is putting relations between the two nations under serious strain. And there's quite a lot going on. So shortly we're going to be going to Dublin, where there are tent cities of these illegal migrants now. And also it's, it's going off a bit at the border, isn't it, between the two countries, the North and yes, the Republic? Yes, uh, reportedly migrants have pitched dozens of tents along the banks of Dublin's Grand Canal, so right in the city centre. And that's days after hundreds were evicted mm. from the tent cities, what people were calling them, um, in the city. So essentially migrants have been moved from one area to Another. So what exactly is going on? Joining us now to discuss this is former ambassador for Ireland, Dan Mulhall. Uh, Dan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You're very welcome. Um, a very difficult situation in Ireland at the moment when it comes to migration. We were hearing reports that tent cities were being uh, evicted, being moved on. Now it appears as though migrants are setting up tents on Dublin's Grand Canal and also at the border. Uh, what's going on? Well, of course, this has become a, a major political issue um, fairly quickly in Ireland. Uh, I would say if you go back to the last um, election in 2019, probably 2020, probably it was was not in the top 10 items on the, the, the electorate's agenda. Now I think it's probably number two or thereabouts as an issue. So obviously our parties like yours are under pressure to find some kind of solution to this problem. The problem really goes back, I think, to the start of the war in Ukraine, because since that time, Ireland has taken in more than 100,000 Ukrainians, which would be the equivalent of 1.2 million in Britain. And that has put a huge strain on the available accommodation. And what it's meant is that now that we have a surge of asylum seekers, there's simply no available space, no uh, rooms that can be allocated to these people coming in seeking asylum. And therefore, it has become a problem because it's now become very visible with these uh, 10 cities on the streets and uh, the government's under pressure to do something about it. Yeah, and I think that visibility also ties in with, let's be honest, you know, rapid demographic change as well, given the certain nations that quite a lot of the people who are actually on the streets in Ireland are coming from, which probably adds to the, uh, I suppose, visual elements of tension, does it not? Well, of course, most of the migrants uh, in Ireland come from the European Union, so they're not really identifiably uh, mm. not Irish, and in fact, We've had very good experience of uh, integrating people from Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and so mm. forth. Obviously, asylum seekers pose a different kind of challenge, but this is a global problem, and there are no simple solutions. People say, close the border. Well, Britain has closed its borders to illegal immigrants. Every country in the world does that, but it doesn't stop people mm. from coming. You know yourself, people will, you know, will risk their lives in leaky boats traveling across the Channel or traveling across the Mediterranean to get to Europe from North Africa. So, you know, it, there is no simple solution to this problem. But I think what's happened in Ireland now is that it's gone up the political agenda, which means that the government's now having to give it priority attention. And I, there are no easy solutions, but I think we will see a stepping up of our efforts to deal with this issue, to provide more accommodation, but also to make it tougher for people to come into Ireland and to try and process people more quickly and remove them when they are uh, not entitled to asylum status. Yeah, and the, the controversial thing from the British standpoint is, of course, what the Irish government has been saying about how they would like migrants to be sent back to the United Kingdom. Mm. Have the Irish government updated their stance on that following Rishi Sunak saying, absolutely not, we can't send migrants back to France, so therefore you can't well, send Well, you know, I, I was at, I, I met the foreign minister, Michal Martin, there at a function in Dublin last week, oh, and yeah. he said, we need to park the noise on this one. In other words, we need to stop, um, you know, megaphone diplomacy at each other. We need to sort of sit down and sort things out. I don't think anybody believes that we're going to be able to send thousands of people back to Britain. But there has been an agreement in place in 2020. But by the way, only about a handful of people have ever been transferred in either direction. Uh, the Irish courts recently decided that Britain was no longer a safe country. The Irish mm -hmm. government is now correcting that, which means that if there are people that fall into a category that are covered by this agreement, then, you know, both sides will take them back. In fact, over the last number of years, apparently, Ireland's taken more from Britain than Britain has taken from Ireland. But nonetheless, this needs to be calmed down. We need to sit down together yeah. like, um, you know, good neighbours and try and find a way I, I, of I dealing that. with this problem. I mean, if there are, I mean, if there are illegal traffickers using mm. Northern Ireland as a, a route for their trafficking, then I think, I, you know, I both that. governments I, have an interest I, I in do, curbing that. I do just wonder, though, you know, from 
from our perspective over here, um, and you know, some people might think, well, it's all very well and good saying this now. And I've got the Irish Independent, the Irish Sun, and the Irish Mirror in front of me here, all of whom are talking about whether or not they support migrant checkpoints at the border. Tell us if you support checkpoints at the Northern Irish border. Uh, all of this stuff. This, this is what's doing the rounds at the moment in the Irish press. You mentioned there that the Republic of Ireland, when it suited them, declared the United Kingdom an unsafe country. No, no, sorry, 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 our courts, uh, one of our courts well, did that. Your courts did, yeah, but, but, you, but, but, I mean, but it's not, but it doesn't mean that, I mean, obviously, I mean, the right. government doesn't but take Dan, that view. Dan, Dan, it was also a political decision to take the United Kingdom to the ECHR over the veteran prosecutions as well, and... Well, that's a negative, I mean, that's a separate uh, matter. Well, yeah, yeah. But it all plays into this rail politique of the situation, doesn't it? And there was also a, I would argue, gleeful disdain towards the United Kingdom when Joe Biden's visit was there. So now it's going against you a bit on the migrant front. Why should we throw our arms open back and say, oh, you just declared us safe again now, that's fine, we'll do some deals with you? Well, because, I mean, there is an agreement in place. We have a common travel area for the last 100 years, which, by the way, was maintained during the troubles in Northern Ireland. So uh, there is no way in which um, that common travel area, which benefits both countries, by the way, and both peoples, should be uh, put in jeopardy. I don't see any way in which the Irish government is ever going to check people at the border between North and South in Ireland. But, I mean, you know, obviously, there is a problem with migration. It's a problem all over Europe. It's a problem all over the world, all over the Western world. It's a problem in Britain and Ireland. And all I would be looking for is for the two governments, which I'm sure they will do, to sit down together and see, are there things that we can cooperate on? Are there ways in which we can tighten the situation? Are there ways in which we can curb people who are engaging in people trafficking using our territory? So, I mean, I, I am fully sympathetic to the, the, uh, to the British, um, you know, um, problems with the people coming across uh, you know, across the channel in boats. This is clearly uh, an illegal activity. It shouldn't be happening, and it shouldn't be happening in Britain. It shouldn't be happening in Ireland. But we've got to find solutions to the problem. There's no point in bleating about how dreadful this is. We have to sit down as mature governments and try and find ways of dealing with the problem of, of migration, which is a major problem now for Ireland as well as for Britain. It's a more recent problem for us. But we have to get used to this. We always thought that we were at the end of the, the, you know, the migrant chain and therefore we probably wouldn't be affected very much. Until recently, yeah. migrants haven't been that visible in Ireland. The numbers were growing, but they haven't been that visible. Overall, we've got about 17% of our population now born outside the state. But for the most part, most of those people are living legally in Ireland and are contributing to our economy. And for me, at least, they're welcome uh, to be in Ireland. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you very much indeed for your time. Really appreciate it. Dan Mohan, Ambassador for Anytime. Ireland. Great to speak to you. Great to speak to you. I mean, all of the reports of, you know, no. police being near the border no. and these surveys where people now are willing to have checkpoints at the border. I mean, people you know. have been talking about this for years and now it's a problem for them. All of a sudden it's, oh, oh, diplomacy, diplomacy. We need diplomacy. We're old friends. They were not friends with us or wanted to be anyway until very recently.